And we're back with some more satisfactory with this weird little sort of main bus design we've got going on. People in the comments were actually quite nice about it. They didn't make too much fun of me. I was actually pleasantly surprised. Anyway, today we're going to start ex extending this on. I added in a, a few things, like I, I stuck on Caterium here near the end because I figured we're definitely going to need that. Though I think we've got all the basics and I just realized we don't have concrete. Don't do it. God damn. Okay. Yeah, I'll put in concrete. One second. There we go. A quick dose of concrete onto the bus and I extended this on. What we're doing here is we have six rows of different resources all through there and then we're going to have another six here and then, well, if we need to expand it more, we'll put another six there. It's a little bit expensive in steel, but we can afford it. For bringing in the uh, the limestone to actually make this, we've uh, brought it in from below. So if you go down here, you'll see we've got the limestone coming in from way over there. This we this allows us to keep all the mess down here, or well, not all the mess, but at least some of the mess down here so it doesn't look quite so bad up top and it's a little bit easier to get things done. Let me just uh, put that back. There we go. See, a nice, clean, efficient dish look. All right, we've got concrete. What's next on the agenda? Having a look through my notes, I realize there is a bunch of stuff we need to do. Uh, first off, well, we have no way of producing intermediate components up here. Ones we're going to need for building, like, let's just say your iron plates, your iron rods, screws, copper cable, uh, wire, and quick wire. That's all coming from our factory down below, and we want to phase all of those out. So I think we'll stick in a quick strip mall right down here. Well, I don't know if you'd call it a strip mall, but it's going to be a mall and it's going to be in a long strip, so I don't know what else you want to call it. First thing we're going to want to do is split off a whole bunch of resources, which will hopefully flow down here quite neatly, and then we're going to plug all of that junk into machines. I don't think we actually need the reinforced iron plates down here, but you know what? It looks neater this way when we have six lines coming through. Then all we got to do is, well, build one of each one of those items. We don't need a lot, we just need them for, well, our productions should be fairly straightforward. I'm thinking we'll stick in six containers right here. There we go. They can hold all of the resources. Then we just got to stick in a bunch of factories and pull the resources off this to make the necessary components. And let's start with... Actually, let's start with the smaller ones. This is going to be incredibly stupidly simple. We're going to want alternative screws here with the steel beam recipe. Yep, that all looks good to me. Then we just have to get steel beams off this, which I think are... Yeah, level three. So level three has the steel beams. Easy peasy. Let's get oh, zero over here. We can hook you up to that. Damn it. I did that wrong, didn't I? Yes, we need to go zero. And then we want to put you up to about level three. Doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough would be nice. And there we go. Then we grab a splitter. And you. Is that about right? Damn it. Can't tell. Yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, is that... Working? Let me put in some power and see if that actually hooked up. Had to redo a couple of belts, but there we go. Perfection. We're now producing screws. We'll just uh, do a belt over there into the corner somewhere. It should be fairly straightforward. And by straightforward, I mean, yeah, it's going to be wonky as all hell. You know me with these. I can never get them to right angles. It's not that I don't care. It's just that I'm not bothered. I don't know. Is that the same thing? Eh, whatever. And done. Oh, wow, that is that is really offline. Never mind. Okay, next up. What was next on our agenda? Iron rods. No problems. Iron rods, also incredibly easy, especially when you're using all these alternative steel recipes. We just plug in steel ingots, of which we have, like, an entire belt down here. We could produce an unconscionable amount of them. But that takes care of two of the problems. Now I think we'll do... Ooh, iron plate. That one's just a little bit more complicated. It has two ingredients. Uh, because it started getting dark, I skipped forward a bit. I can't... The, there's no in-date mod that allows you to get rid of the nighttime cycle, so I kind of just skip nighttime bits. It's too dark otherwise. We've got here a 18 iron plate being made from steel ingots and two plastic. And you'll see here we're actually pulling the steel ingots off and the plastic off the bus, and done. And then next up down here we've got... Oh, copper wire. We're using Caterium to make copper wire. Now, there's, there's, there's method to this madness. I know that seems crazy wasting Caterium on this, but... It just works out cheaper for us in terms of the amount of resources that we're pulling off the bus to produce what we want. But, uh, oh, uh, what's next up over here? I think, oh, yeah, this is the interesting one. Well, we wanted to make wire, right? Uh, the problem was wire takes copper wire, which we don't have on the bus. So instead, we sort of built another copper wire factory, and then we feed that directly into the wire machine. We even underclocked it a bit just to make sure they're all uh, running at the same speed, and that gets us our cable production. And I'll plug that in a minute, and then I just wanted to see this last one over here. This here is going to be our quick wire. And I thought I'd just show you how I figured out the uh, the most convenient way to hook these up was. 
Now the top line is our Caterium ingots. So we're just going to grab a splitter. Let's see, where is the middle? Yeah, right about there is good. Then we have to throw in one of these uh, conveyor lifts. We just clamp that onto the bottom. And then we cycle it up. And these things actually sort of just snap onto each other. And done. You can actually see it moving already. Done. Uh, is that powered up? There we go. And the Caterium quick wire starts to flow. Then we just have to plug that into one of our containers down the end. You know what? We'll put you out to about there, I think. Oh, God, that's going to be awful wonky. Just, just give me a minute. There we go. Let the quick wire flow. Oh, and there was one last thing. I left a little bit of this to last because I didn't want to clog up this back area. This is where the actual wire comes out. Well, I'll throw you to there, and then we can run you down all the way to the end. Where is it? Where is it? Yep. There is good. And chuck you to that one. And that's all six done. In fact, I think I might just move the signs from there over to here. This, I think, is going to become our sort of our central location for coming to collect stuff. I might even put in some extra storage containers and throw, like, steel beams and things in there. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. There we go. That's a beautiful little centralized location. We, we can probably stack more on there, but uh, for now what I've done is... I've set up a little tower so we know where we are in the middle, and we can put these little transport belts on the side. That way we can get an extra speed boost and skim all the way to the end of the platform really quickly to get back to our old base. And I've even put some transport belts on the other side so that we can, well, basically do that in the opposite direction as well. And... yoink. This should allow us to... we'll put in a few of these as we go around, and it should allow us to traverse the factory an awful lot faster, because running back and forth these long distances, yeah, that gets real old real quickly. Anyway. Next up, a little bit of steel pipe for the bus. This one, super simple. We just pull off some steel ingots, chuck them into constructors, just the basic ones. We get out two steel pipes for every three steel ingots. There are no alternative recipes available for steel pipe. You, this is just the only way to get it. Then we have the outputs come out over here. And yeah, it's only three constructors long. We can add to them later if we need them, but that should be more than enough for our needs for now. And we got a little stockpile here on the end so that we can come along and grab some more as we need them. I'm thinking next up, hmm, encased industrial beam. That does, You can use uh, an alternative recipe with that that involves these uh, steel pipes. That's why we did the steel pipes first. So right here we can put in the industrial beams. There are only two recipes for encased industrial beams. One uses steel beam and concrete, the other uses steel pipe and concrete. Steel pipe is just cheaper. There's, there's no real debate between either of these because there's no alternative recipes involved in any of the production up to this point. There we are, encased industrial beam completed. Yeah, it will take a time for the machines to catch back up and saturate everything. These are very slow. It's four per minute for each of these, and they do consume, uh, what is it, 28 steel pipe per minute. So they're pretty hungry, but that's no problems. Okay, what was the next thing on the agenda? Modular frames, that was it. This, oh, okay. We're going to have to go through a couple of recipes here because these, uh, these get interesting. This here is just the wiki on it. it it's simpler this way. You can either pay three reinforced enforced iron plates and some iron rods to make them. All of this is actually about the exact same price per modular frame as this one down here. So both of these work out the exact same way. It just, it depends which way you want to do it. The reason being, you can make screws out of steel beams and you can make iron rods out of uh, steel ingots. So just the whole thing works out the same for some bizarre reason. And this one actually works out worse because these steel pipes, they're far less efficient than just using the, the steel to make the, the screws and iron rods. This one takes a little bit more effort to make, or these two take a little bit more effort to make, but uh, just simpler. So we're going to go with bolted frames for our build. I know I have been skipping the build aspect of this. It's just, normally it's not that, um, it's just not that complicated. It's just a case of, well, connecting the cable, so to speak. Over here, we're going to make screws. Those screws are going to pop out and go into the back of these machines. Now, the thing is, this thing only produces 260 screws per minute. Each one of these requires 140 screws per minute, so we're going to underclock them a bit. Now this one is already set up. This one, however, is not configured yet. But thanks to the smart mod, when we just... Yeah, it gives a conveyor splitter there. We'll put one... Yeah, there seems about right. And we'll put one for the second one too. Done. That gives us all our transport belts and our splitters and all that. Then all we have to do is plug the stuff in. So, screws come from over here. And go into there. Then we're going to need another splitter to pull off the um, reinforced iron plate, which I think is on level four. Yep, yeah, on level four up there. Okay, so no, no. God damn it! Where is it? One, two, three, at ah, four. Right there we go. So splitter goes there, and we'll just put the oop, oop, oop. No, no. Get in there. There you go. Boom. 
And that brings in the reinforced iron plate. Excellent. Then we just plug in the power. And that should just be a case of you should connect to... Come on, there's a power pole around here somewhere. I do, don't... Don't do me that way. There's a power pole. Yeah, there we go. Done. Then all we have to do is plug in stuff from the front. For here, we need to get steel beam. And then the outputs from here have to be fed back onto the bus. Uh, one minute while I figure that out. I'm thinking the simplest thing for this would be we'd have the mergers coming in here. Wait, damn it, which side are we on? Mm, yeah, that way. And line them up there. Both of them might put into the mergers. Then the mergers will come along over here. And then when we get to this side, we have to uh, load them from the bottom up to the top. So for that, we're going to need a lift. Come on. Nope. Come on. Where are you? I need you to line up with that one over there. Okay, there we go. Okay, back a bit. Back a bit. Okay. Perfect. And that's going to go up to layer three. Yeah, about there. Then we just have to stick in a merger, which should go there. But we have to delete this again in a second. Merger can go right there. Delete this. Replace it again. I know it's a little bit frustrating to do this this way, but uh, there's no. This is the best way I found so far. Back a bit more. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna need that transport belt a little bit closer first. You. Uh, actually, we'll put in the storage containers. And oh my God, it's like the sunlight just vanished instantly, didn't it? All right, industrial storage bin, we'll put you right about here. Done. Wait, wait, back just a little bit. Perfect. Then when we come back over here, it'll all be lined up an awful lot nicer. So we grab zero again. Now it should actually have a lineup point. We were just a little bit too far away the last time, so we couldn't get the lineup point just right. There we go. And then we can just rotate that up there. That plugs into that. Boom. And that's how we're going to get the output back onto the belt. Now all we have to do is plug in the steel for the screws and make sure that the steel can continue on because the steel needs to be able to go on if we add in more assemblers when we do later. We're going to need the steel to be able to get past this point to the next assembler on the other side. If we want to make more of these, uh, what do you even call it, modular frames, we're going to need to do these three machines in a row after that and that again and again depending on how much we expand this out. So, simplest thing to do. Uh, let's just grab a splitter. Uh, nope, nope, not that way. Yeah, that way looks just about fine. We'll put you right... Oh, come on. Right there, I think, is just about perfect. Nope, nope, nope. Damn it. The automatic system put in the belt. There we go. Instead, we have it come from here and go down. God damn it. Sorry about that. It was just a case of uh, the splitter turned when we moved it. Okay, then we just have to get a splitter off there to grab the steel beams, which should be on row three. Ah, yes, there we go. So, we just grab another splitter. I know this is just... It's the simplest way to do these things. I mean, I enjoyed the bus because it just makes things convenient. There's good. You can just come back there. And... Come on. And would you look at that? Steel beams all the way down, turning into steel screws, and I didn't actually connect the power to that, did I? Come on. Give me the power. Here we go. And... Oh, yes, I... God damn it. Done. Excellent. So this assembler is ready to go. How is you looking? Yeah, perfect. All finished. Now we just got to hook up this last one here. And wait for the outputs to start flowing. There we go. There's the first few modular frames out of the factory. And off they go. If we want, we can extend this on. Uh, we, we don't want to, though. We're going to be... What's our power requirements right now? I'm pretty sure we're uh, we're a little bit higher than I'd like. Actually, no, we have uh, 4,050 megawatts and we're only consuming 2,600. Hmm, well, the max consumption is 2,600. Also, all of this stuff we're doing, all of these things we're building, they mean we can go downstairs to the ground floor and demolish our old factory. Actually, just let me label this and we'll go down to our old factory. There we go. Beautiful modular frames. Now they're going out. Uh, wait, is that bus system working? Oh my god, I stuck it onto the wrong one. Okay, my bad. That should not be there. Oopsie. Instead, that merger should be up, we're going to say around there. Yeah, perfect. Doesn't matter, The uh, this here will be able to sort it out in a second. You, go away. And instead, we're going to put you... Okay, damn it. 
Never mind. I know how to fix this. All we have to do is grab zero again. <laughs> I swear to God, there's a whole bunch of this I leave out because it's just me trying to figure out exactly how these mechanics work and I haven't quite found a smooth way to do them yet. Uh, done. Uh, let's maybe stick some modular frames in there. Uh, where's the ones from our storage? Oh, wow, we do have several. You know what? Take all of those for that. In fact, take all of them. Let's make sure they all end up where they're supposed to. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And onto the bus. Now, where is our old factory? Well, our old factory is down on the ground floor in the darkness. Let's just pop down there real quick. And down here is where all our old machines are. And what I'm trying to do is replace all of these so we don't need, we can demolish all of these machines and get a better understanding of our power. Uh, for example, what do we got over here? Yeah, iron rods, we've got those covered. We can start deleting machines. After running around down here and deleting several sections of things, I think we are finally good. We have deleted everything we can. Uh, well, there is a, an entire storage container here full of iron rods. I'm not, I'm not touching it. In fact, there's a second one up there. There's, there's way too many iron rods. Those iron rods can stay there. The only things really left down here to be built are rotors. Yep, there's rotors down here. There's stators being produced upstairs and some of the wires. Actually, level two is where we did most of our copper stuff. I think we can disable wire production. We've got that on tap upstairs. Oh, and over here is the Christmas production section. I didn't really cover that, but uh, oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's do that now. If you check under here, we've got these uh, noblesks and all that. But if you hit with what is it, G? You can make these snowballs for Christmas, and these snowballs are basically the exact same as noblesks. Well, I say the exact same, but not quite. They do the exact same amount of damage, supposedly, but they only take up five. One slot takes up 500 snowballs. It takes 50 noblesks will normally fill a slot, but this way you can fit 10 times as much explosives into one slot. So all I've done is produced a whole bunch of Christmas trees. Had those Christmas trees produce presents. Those presents come through down, where is it, over here. And then they go into these machines to produce snow. Uh, the snow then comes all the way down here to the end. And that snow gets turned into snowballs. Those snowballs, they produce about five a minute. That all comes down here. And then I made this whole array of storage containers. So we got like, I don't think it's been, how many per container? 24,000. So there's 24,000, 24,000, 24,000, 24,000. Oh, not quite. This is where we're starting to to run out. So we've got about 100,000 snowballs. That should tide us over till next year when the season starts again. And we can use those to clear out a bunch of, you know, monsters and things later on. Yeah, we'll totally be demolishing that once Christmas is over, though. All right, our, our factory is actually starting to look like a long, sprawling string of something. But uh, I think the next thing we're going to be putting in is copper sheets. They're required for a bunch of the plumbing type stuff, and I think we can throw them in here fairly quick. They are going to require water, so we'll be tapping into the water section down below. I'll show you that in a minute. Just let me figure out where exactly we're going to stretch these out. To make this copper sheet, we have, well, two options. The basic one is you put in two copper ingots, and you get out one copper sheet. And that only costs you about four megawatts. However, if you're willing to upgrade to about 30 megawatts and add in a little bit of water, you can get... Well, a one-to-one. -one. So three copper ingots give you three copper sheets. You're doubling the output of your copper. And since we are working on a main bus design, it's it's probably better if we use the cheaper one. Now, I don't use some of the other ones like... Uh, let's go with... Ah, uh, here it is. Uh, like, pure iron ingots requires you... Gives water and iron ore gives you... Well, a nice bonus of iron ingots. So you can put in seven iron ore and get out 13 iron ingots instead of the one-to-one -one ratio we're getting. We don't care so much about that because the raw resources we're bringing in from below... It's only when we have to start processing things that we start caring because that it takes resources off our bus and we have limited throughput or limited bandwidth available on that. Anyway, we are going to have to bring in water. So I'm thinking, let's use the scroll wheel to go down to, I think it's this one. Yes. Uh, if we put in a floor hole here, can we get the water pipe in? Uh, you know what? That's a little bit ugly. Let's get that a little bit closer and see how see how good we can make this. Turns out that is as close as we can get it. All right, then. There we go. All four of them hooked up with piping that goes below. Now all we got to do is go down and grab the water and... Nope. Oh. Yep, that's... That's why we wear a jetpack. Sometimes I think I should stick on the uh, the Blade Runners, but... Yeah, every so often I do something dumb like that and realize why I, I don't. Um, 
we should actually put a little bit of concrete platform out there. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here we are. Perfect. Now we just got to run the piping. Now the piping we've managed to uh, install over here, it comes all the way from down there. There is, uh, I think about three water pumps helping out with that. But it's okay, so long as we've got the water and it's accessible to our people, that is grand. You, uh, come all the way over here. We're not even going to try and be nice about this, we, we don't really care to- Hey! Fine. There. Done. Eh, where are you? Right about there. Okay, so we'll put the pipes to there. Come on this way? Is that about lined up? Nope, nope. Right about there is good. And then we'll just run this all the way down to the end. Now, we'll probably have to extend this later when we extend our piping section, but there we go. Sticking one of these suckers under each one of them, so one there. They don't even have to be that perfect. Great thing about water is once it's on a level playing field, you don't really have to care too much. You can put it wherever you want. Done, done, done. Oh. Fine, I'll come back to you. Can you? Yay! Perfect. Perfect. And, okay, they're not perfect, but they're pretty close. I mean, hey, look, that even fits there. All right, everyone's getting their water. Come on. Oop, 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 oop. We'll, we'll maybe won't seal it up for a second. Then all we need is, well, the copper. Now, where do we put that? I want to say it's, ooh, second from the top? Is it? Yeah, copper second from the top. Grand, so. Uh, one moment. Managed to figure out just so that I eyeballed where that splitter went. And there we go. So that should be the copper. Done. We've already got water going on and we should have the power plugged in. How are we looking? There we go, constructing. Then all we have to do is oh, seal up that hole so we don't accidentally fall in there at some point in the future. And then put the copper sheets onto the bus. Done and done. Would you look at that? All pretty and flowing right onto the bus. Though... Our second bus is almost full as well, which means we've only got one lane free at the very time. We're going to have to do another lane. Yeah, they have a lot of items in this game, don't they? Okay, AI limiters is going to be up next. Uh, let's just grab a quick constructor here, or assembly machine. Yeah, AI limiters only require two items. Uh, where are we? Here we are. So they require copper sheets and quick wire, both of which are on the bus, so this should be... Pretty simple, to be honest. We'll put down about four of them, I think. What are they output at? Five a minute? Yeah, well, we'll stick down four. That should be plenty. Wait, wait. I just looked at copper sheets. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's limit it to three. Three should actually be enough. We're not actually producing enough copper sheets to support four. There's a quick start to it. Uh, the caterium coming down from the top row goes straight into those machines to make the quick wire. Quick wire goes out the back. Dumped into the machine over there. And we've got the copper cables. I didn't even bring it off the bus. I just realized the copper cables are right beside us, so I just ran a splitter immediately. You know, why not? Save us a little bit of time. Though it's probably not up to, you know, company spec, of course. And there we go. Our first area limiter. Now, I think I'll stick down just a couple more of these behind it, and then we'll have three of them up and running. Two more added. That brings us up to three. That's about 15 AI limiters per minute. That should be more than enough for our needs, though... Yeah, considering how long our uh, our bus is, it's going to be a while before we saturate the bus. You can see them there getting uh, starting to pile up in the distance. I am sure that is an incredibly inefficient waste of resources. But hey, what can we do? I think next up we're going to do crystal oscillators. We're going to need those before we get into motors. However, that introduces a problem. We need rubber for that. So I think we're going back to our plastic section. I never really covered the build of the plastic, and I don't think I'm going to cover the rubber either. Honestly, these are going to be temporary setups until we get our hands on the diluted fuel recipe at level at tier 7. In fact, all we're trying to do is get all the stuff we need to get to tier 7. Yeah, this is the plastic. I'm basically just going to mirror the rubber, the opposite side, and then we'll just leave it at that. All we did here was, well, very simple. This main line down here, this is just crude oil going straight down the middle. And on the right side, we've got plastic being produced. And on the left side, we have got the rubber being produced. Now, there is byproducts of these. We don't have the more efficient recipes just yet because they're uh, locked behind a higher tier level. So both of these spit out this heavy oil, or, yeah, this heavy oil residue. In both instances, we're just turning it into petroleum coke. It's like a, a weak sauce fuel. But instead of even burning it, we're just destroying it. And by destroying it, I mean we feed it into this awesome sink over here. It 
we're honestly getting an absolutely minuscule amount of points out of it. It's not really worth the effort. But at the same point, it's the fastest way to get rid of it without having to build power plants and work out scales. No, no, it's all good because this produces quite a bit. 120 per minute means the, each one of these is producing about 240 per minute, which means two of them will almost completely saturate one of our Mark III belts. So we're just not going to mess around with that. Anyway, we will go down here. And down below, this is where all of the uh, the plastic and rubber spits out. And oh my god, why don't you lock into place? Sorry, never mind. Alright, down here we have plastic. Oh, lights. So the plastic comes from above, or sorry, the plastic comes from above and goes onto a conveyor belt over there. Rubber, exact same thing, they just come down here. It's just easier than running them all across the top. Now we just have to figure out, where am I taking this? Hmm, give me a minute. Turns out, it's a long, long way. Oh, by the way, there's, uh, there's Christmas trees actually poking up through the floor there. Anyway, this uh, rubber is going to go all the way along here and all the way over to that section over right there in the distance. And it's going to plug into this transport belt right there. And that should be the end of it. We now have rubber on the bus, though we've now expanded to 6, 12, well, we're up to 18 lines. Not, not bad at all. And where were we? Ah, yes, crystal oscillators. We went through all of that so we could just stick some crystal oscillators on the bus. So, to make crystal oscillators, we're going to need to refine some quartz. The thing is, how do you refine quartz? There's two ways you can do it. You can take raw quartz and you can turn it into quartz crystal. Five raw quartz gives you a three quartz crystal. The other one is you can take a bunch of raw quartz with water and turn it into quartz crystal, and that actually gives you about a 30% increase in the amount of quartz crystal you get. Though you're going from, what, four megawatts of power to 30, and you're also going to need a bunch of water, and no, just, just no. For the 30% increase, well, 29.6 something percent increase, not worth it in my opinion. We're just going to use basic assemblers. Uh, thing is, we've actually got a bunch of quartz right over there. So we've actually got two pure quartz nodes right there. I'm thinking, actually, you know what? We will go down there and we'll build up the quartz down here close to this water section. We'll just refine it all down here and only bring up the refined quartz or the whatever, the crystal boxes. They can go upstairs. And that way, if we ever change our mind and need more crystal, we're closer to the water, meaning we can uh, just sort of pull up some water from there and refine it on site and send up the refined product. Now, give me a few minutes. This could take a second. This actually turned out to be reasonably pleasant. We just uh, stuck in the miner, overclocked it a little bit so we could saturate the belt fully. Uh, I messed it up, didn't I? Nope, 270, grand. Then over here we just ran eight of them. We only need seven, but, well, uh, I wasn't bothered. <laughs> eight is 7.2, but I put in eight. Uh, then all of that comes along here and the crystal gets run up this section. We just built ourselves a platform entirely out of concrete all the way up. Simple as. Once you get to the top, it turns around here, and would you look at that? That actually just worked out perfectly. I'm using the uh, the oh the ramps you get out of the awesome shop. They they cost about a ticket, but they give you a much steeper angle. It's better for going up a uh, nice steep angles like that. Now, how are we going to use this? I don't think we really need this crystal for anything else. Maybe radio control units. Uh, so let's mount it on layer two on our third bus dear lord these buses are getting out of hand the amount of steel we've invested in this is um it, it it warms my heart when it comes to making crystal oscillators there's two recipes one of them is your basic one and the other one requires ai limiters now uh, we did just make ai limiters and that was no coincidence we wanted those ai limiters to use this alternative recipe namely because it's well less steel intensive this requires an awful lot more steel from us because of the uh, the five reinforced iron plate and we'd like to maybe ease off on our steel dependency just a tad so this alternative recipe is actually much better for us. As well as that, it should be fairly good to do, and we've already just put the rubber on the bus. To make this crystal oscillator, we're going to be needing this building, the manufacturer. Manufacturer? It can take up to four inputs. Uh, this gets a little bit large. However, there is one advantage we have going for us, and that is the, can the smart mod is allowing us to do things like this so that we don't have to worry too much. You know what, let's put that about... Ooh, there is fine. Yeah, yeah, that'll be... Good, I don't want the angles to be too steep on the last ones. Excellent. Now, we don't need the third input, so we can delete that. But for now, let's leave that in. we got to plug in quartz crystal rubber and AI limiters. This should only take a moment. Would you look at that? It's beautiful. 
we've got all the ingredients flowing in. Now, you'll notice that I didn't do anything fancy. In fact, a whole bunch of those are horrifically running through other transport belts and just looks... Oh, man, if you had a, a bit of OCD, this would probably be killing you right now. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not... I am not running those up and down with the uh, the lift. Oh, what do you call it? Those... Uh, mm. Yes, these things, these conveyor lifts, I'm not using them to take them on and off or take them off the bus. It's just too much effort. I am just far too lazy. Instead, we're all going to just going to run them in that way. And that's going to start giving us our crystal oscillators. I think we're going to want about ooh, three of these manufacturers. Yeah, we're going to put in about three of them. That should give us enough to get started, at least to get a, our motors up and running. There they go. Crystal oscillator production has started. Now, are you getting onto the bus? Yes, you are. Perfect. All right, we went through all of that so we could make cheap motors. I, I swear, like the AI limiters, everything, all so we could make cheap motors, and it makes it much more expandable later on as well. That's three manufacturers. Jesus, those things are actually incredibly expensive in terms of resources and power to produce. Well, at this level. To uh, make one of those costs 10 heavy reinforced frames, which we don't have. We, uh, we actually found those around at crash sites, though we can make them manually now. They're actually the last thing on our list to make today. To make motors, we're going to need to make rotors. Well, rotors and satyrs. But for the rotors, this this is where things start getting weird again. Well, again-ish. For example, a normal rotor requires five iron rods and 25 screws. But because we're using all steel recipes, this turns out to be the cheapest recipe. This alternative one here is actually a tiny fraction more expensive in terms of resources. It just uses more copper instead of steel. This one actually turns out to be way, way more expensive. <laughs> it's just... Well, actually, not way, way more expensive. It's, it's a little bit more expensive as well. So the alternates are actually worse than just the basic rotor crafting. Right, so let's... Uh, we're, and also, we're going to need rotors on the bus because they're required to make smart, smart plating, which is one of the things we'll have to put on... Well, not put on the bus, but we're going to have to make smart plating to throw into other things like uh, that go into the... Ah, the space elevator. So a quick rotor build, I think, is in order. And this is our quick motor build, which is... Mm, Mm, just a horrific mess of belting. However, they're, they're very cheap to make, as in all we need is iron ingots and steel. Um, steel beams, that's it. The iron ingots we turn into iron rods, and the steel beam we turn into screws. Then all they do is they come out the other side here, and they flow up and get dumped right into the machines. In fact, these produce enough that even underclocked, we have both of these underclocked. This one is underclocked to 200 screws per minute, so 76.9% or something like that. This one's underclocked to 40 iron rods per minute, which is 83.3%, and that's able to keep these two machines running. So we put down two of those, feeding in the, the resources into these two, and then we just repeat that again down there, meaning we have four manufacturers making them. That should quite handily catch us up with any uh, shortfalls we have. Now, all we need to do to make motors is make some satyrs to go with them. Due to a little bit of short-sightedness, uh, we didn't have enough caterium coming in there for a while. Reason being, I only built about uh, four refineries when you can max out, I think it's about 11 or 12 we needed. But, you know, I was trying to conserve power and we didn't need that much at the time. However, since we've plugged in the AI limiters, yeah, that soaks up a lot of that caterium. So we've increased production by about two and a half times and now we've got plenty of caterium flowing. That should hopefully solve the problem. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Back over here, we had decided to plug in... Pretty, I want to say... Satyrs? Was it? Yes. There we go. Staters. Staters, not satyrs. I keep calling them satyrs for some reason. Anyway, we've got a uh, staters plugged in. Then uh, all we have to do now is plug that onto the bus. How many things have we got? How much space have we got left in this bus? Is this the last one? No, we're going to have one more tile left, which is great because that's where the motors are going to go. There are three different ways to make motors. The basic one is just ch chucking two rotors and two satyrs together and you get one motor. However, if you just put one more rotor, one more satyr, and then throw in a crystal oscillator, you get six. This is a huge increase. Now, it does depend how much this the crystal oscillator costs you to make, but we got it for pretty cheap, so this works out really well for us. There's also the electromagnetic control rod one, but yeah, that, that's tier seven. We don't have access to that, and I'm pretty sure this one works out better anyway. So all of the effort we went to to get the crystal oscillators was, well, the reason we wanted the crystal oscillators was for the motors. Uh, so the crystal oscillators, though, we wanted the AI limiters. Um, also, that meant we wanted rubber as well. We needed rubber for the crystal oscillators, and the AI limiters was what required us to have copper sheets and the quick wire. So a lot of what we were building was all just so we could build the most efficient motors possible. Yeah, I see why this game sucks people in so much.
One downside of this recipe is that we need to use a manufacturer to make it. It requires three ingredients. Uh, this manufacturer, you notice we haven't set up the recipe. I just want to demonstrate the smart mod function that's kind of nice. Uh, there's conveyor splitters. You know, whoop, whoop, turn that around. Uh, line it up. And we will... Yeah, there we go. That might actually be a bit steep. You know what? I don't care. It looks cool. But now that we've done that, it's actually copied the recipe over to this one as well, meaning all we have to do is plug in the ingredients. All we need is rotors, stators, and crystal oscillators. And we are not going to be pretty about this. I apologize in advance. There we go. We basically just ran them straight through. We just stuck on slitters and sent them off. I used to try and avoid getting uh, transport belts clipping through each other. But after a while, I've just stopped caring. It's just so much faster this way. As the sun sets in the factory, we've got motor production up and running. This stuff is going... Well, Pretty damn fast. That's going to be 7.5. We'll be doing about 15 motors per minute with just these two factories, which is quite a lot better than we were doing before. This is working out quite nicely, but I think I'm going to cut it out today. I'm actually over time again, and I, I wanted to get heavy modular frames done and computers and circuit boards, but yeah, we just don't have time for that today. And the factory, just look at it. I can't remember how much we built today, but it's a lot. Uh, yeah, we definitely built all of this. Pretty much everything along here, the entire second and third row of belts. Yeah, no, they're, uh, oh, I think it started somewhere back at that watchtower over there. Christ, this game really sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Well, anyway, anyway, uh, Merry, Merry Holidays, Happy Christmas, all that stuff. Uh, I hope you're having a, a great holidays. I know I was, I'm, I'm going back to them now in a minute, so I'll probably be a little bit flim-flammy for the next few days, but uh, this is the season. Anyway, I hope I wasn't too hungover for this, and uh, good luck.